for independent, independent and peaceful Australia network. One of 18 organisations who initiated and organised this meeting. This is the first of two meetings to get feedback on your support for the formation of a broad-based national movement coming together in a major campaign against AUKUS and the march to war. We look forward to hearing your views on building this potential national mass campaign and movement. As you would have seen on the agenda, this meeting is to start planning national days of actions and to begin discussions on objectives and name for this coalition or movement. So um, also thank you to all who have responded to our survey with your preferences for names and objectives for the coalition and or movement. And this is something that we will be discussing whilst we're having that conversation about the name of this coalition, of this movement. And also thank you all those who put in their vision statements, um, and mainly from a number of organisations. They make important contributions to discussions on building a mobilised and united mass movement and will be briefly reported on at this meeting. Our two co-facilitators for this meeting are Jem Ronald and Kerry and Gali. Jem is the Australian Director of the International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons, a former radio producer and committed to building people power for a nuclear free and just future for all. K.A. Gali is the Nuclear Free Community Campaigner for the Con Conservation Council of West Australia, who works with First Nations people and communities who, who are opposed to proposed uranium mining projects in Western Australia. K.A. is one of the presenters on the 3CR radioactive show and is a committed anti-nuclear activist who has experience of being involved in peace walks around the world for world peace and a nuclear-free future. Also, KA will give us a short report on the British nuclear-powered warship presently berthed at HMAS Stirling Naval Base near Perth, where local communities are taking action in protests against the, the nuclear subs. We think Jem and KA, we thank Jem and KA for their time and commitment to co-facilitating this meeting. We also thank Friends of Earth, one of the 18 organisations initiating this meeting for their support and the technical coordination and management of today's meeting. So now over to you, Jim and Kay, eh, to open this meeting. Thank you. Thanks, Shirley, and good morning or afternoon, whatever is the case uh, to everyone here across the country. Pretty incredible to see more than 100 people here on this Sunday, rainy Sunday for me. I'm delighted and honoured to be co-facilitating this meeting with KA. Uh, she is joining us from Wadjuk Noongar land and I'm joining today from Gadigal land of the Eora Nation. And we'd like to acknowledge the elders past, present and emerging and any First Nations people in the Zoom room today. Sovereignty has never been ceded over the lands and the waters of so-called Australia and we recognise the ongoing harm of colonisation here and across the Pacific region, and we see how it manifests again in the AUKUS agreement. So we've got a lot to do, so let's get on to housekeeping. Um, thank you so much for being um, here. There, you know, it's a Sunday, there may be a lot of other stuff going on, um, and yet you are here. If you would like to, please change your name in Zoom uh, to, to say your name and uh, the organisation, if you are here representing one, what country you're on and your pronouns. Or if you prefer, you can just pop that in the chat to um, say hello and introduce yourself. Please keep your mic on mute when you're not speaking. And as you probably know from the little voice, uh, the meeting is being recorded. So that this recording won't be uploaded public anywhere. It's purely uh, for people to watch who wanted to be here for this meeting but couldn't make it, including comrades from across the seas. Um, also, the breakout rooms, when we go off into little groups, that section won't be recorded. So it's been quite a process to bring this agenda and the meeting together. Huge thanks to the organisations and dedicated people who have been part of that, especially the Independent Peaceful Australia Network and Friends of the Earth. KA and I have the easy position to just swan in after all that work has been done. 
Um, and there's also a three person tech team to keep things running smoothly, which is very, very handy. So we'll be using breakout rooms later in the meeting uh, and interactive slides and sticky notes. Um, but if that all sounds quite crazy, don't worry, it'll be easy and we'll guide you through it. Thanks to everyone who has responded to the survey ahead of uh, the meeting and those contributions have already been incorporated into the, the brainstorming that we'll do later. So KA will run through the agenda in a moment and I'll just right now remind us all that we'd like this meeting to be a, a safe space where racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, ableism and violent communication won't be tolerated so that we can focus on the work at hand. So why are we here? For the very briefest reminder, there's been a new pact announced, as you all know, between the US, UK and Australia with the awkward name of AUKUS. And a major feature of that announcement has been the proposal for Australia to acquire nuclear powered submarines, but it's not just about subs, it's also about more troops in Darwin, more collaboration on artificial intelligence, cyber capabilities, potentially hosting US weaponry and a whole lot more. There is a lot of knowledge, expertise and power in this room. It's quite an incredible room of people, Zoom room, but um, we'll resist diving into the issues because this isn't a big info session, but an action meeting. But I do want to see if you have at least one reason to oppose the AUKUS Pact or any of its manifestations. And I would like to see your hand go up if you do have at least one reason. I've got at least one, I've got many. If you've got one, if you've got more than one, if you have say two, then, or more, please put your hand up. If you don't have any reasons, then, you know, maybe you don't need to be here, um, but I can see a lot of hands up. And I think with this many people and this many reasons, I'm gonna make a wild assumption that we have some commonalities and a strong basis to grow this movement. So you can take your hands down. Thank you. Yes. And now I will hand over to KA to share the report back and take us into the agenda. Thanks, Jem, and hello, everyone. It's so wonderful we, to be here on Wajak Noongar Wajar. Um, I'm going to start off with just a report back of what's happening in Western Australia because I think it's really pressing and it's really important um, to, to understand the situation and the urgency of this um, AUKUS proposal. Um, pretty much the ink on the, on the proposal is not yet dry and we've got here about half an hour, an hour away from where I sit a UK nuclear powered astute class submarine stationed at the Stirling Naval Base, which is just about half an hour, as I said, out of Fremantle, um, where most of the anti-nuke activists live in Western Australia. It's in the McGowan's electorate. And so many of us here in Western Australia are asking, you know, what is this sign? Is this a sign of more to come for Western Australia? And what does it mean for us? Um, as Jem said, the plan, you know, not only sounds awkward, but it's it's downright uh, dangerous move that would, you know, have serious regional repercussions and pose uh, environmental and security concerns to Western Australian ports and cities and shipyards and oceans. I won't go into too much about the details because there's so many people on here that know much more about it than me. But basically, I want to acknowledge last Sunday, uh, the 31st of October, Joe Valentine, who I believe is on this call um, this morning or this, af this afternoon and um, is a former Green Senator. Many of you who know um, her, she called a snap action to unwelcome the UK nuclear powered um, submarine in the port and to highlight the pressure of AUKUS um, that that's placing on Australia and to, you know, as we know, nuclearize our military engagements. So people are upset and people are angry and they showed up and they spoke about the deep um, risk and irresponsible approach to lock Australia into the nuclear war, for, war fighting plans of the US and UK. Um, I'll put up on the link in the chat, if you haven't seen it already, there was um, a live stream of that protest that's happened um, where Joe Val was speaking to two reporters from Channel 7 and Channel 9, I believe, but they were also covering for the ABC. Um, the action was really positive and engaging, particularly as it was a snap action in less than 24 hours, because as you all know, that we don't get a lot of time to um, 
know that these warships are coming into into the port and um and what was really important was that we got our message out loud and clear um but what it highlighted for us is the urgency and the importance to organize to mobilize to agitate and de demonstrate more than ever and as strong and as quickly as we can and that's why this meeting this morning or today is so important and to to really start start getting out there so I think it's really great that this meeting's happening and we can, um, you know, we know in WA we've got a lot of anti, anti war and anti nuke activists here um, that are creative and intelligent and capable and diverse um, people that are ready to, are ready to go. I know uh, Senator Jordan's also on this call today and hello and thank you for coming on this call um, and this meeting because it really means that we can we can get some work done here in Western Australia, but also nationally together. And that's what this meeting's all about. So on to the agenda, and I hope you've all um, hopefully had a chance to have a look through the agenda um, and to read it and you're, you're ready to go. Um, at this point, it's important to remember, as Jem said, that this meeting really isn't an open discussion, it's a um, action meeting. So we really want some um, to achieve some important important outcomes of this meeting. So we only have 90 minutes to, to um, you know, get going and, and crack on. So um, after these introductions, we'll move into the plenary discussions where you'll hear from Stephen Darley, the member of IPAN, who'll give an overview of the National Day of Action. So there's been lots of discussion about this National Day of Action, which is really exciting. Then we'll move into the breakout rooms for a solid 30 minutes where you'll be able to discuss and talk about the National Day of Action there, um, which is where you know, your voices and your creative ideas get to really shine, which will be great um, to work through the themes of the um, National Day of Action that's been proposed, to work out um, an interim working group and the name of um, the National Coalition to Stop AUKUS. So I think that that'll be a really great, um, inspiring time for you all. And, um, then after the breakout groups, we'll come back together and regroup um, and hear a bit more from Gemini and time permitting, but hopefully not just Gemini, time permitting, we'll hear from a few other groups and their ideas and themes and what you discussed in those breakout groups. And then getting to the end of the meeting, we'll discuss uh, where to next, where to um, for the interim working group, the next steps forward, and finally ending with a fabulous photo of you all and um, an evaluation and a wrap. And um, so it's pretty exciting next hour or so. Um, for this action um, meeting, the following is what we're hoping to achieve. Um, we wanna see um, support for the National Day of Action, themes, dates, and plans. We wanna see um, a discussion and it doesn't have to be, we're not looking for a final decision on the name for the coalition, uh, the national coalition. What we're looking for is just some ideas there and the interim working group will work further on, on finalizing those details. We're looking um, for a discussion on the goals and objectives of what this national group looks like. Um, and then again, no need to make any final decisions on that, but just it'd be good to have a discussion of what you all think. Um, but what would be really fabulous in this meeting, what I think is what is needed, is that establishment of a working group who will collate all of this information and input and your voices from this meeting so that we can coordinate a follow-up meeting. Um, and we encourage and hope that, you know, all are welcome to join this working group. So I think that's all for me for the minute and I'll pass over to Jem uh, for the plenary discussion. Sure. So now I'm just going to pull out some lines from one of the statements that ha has come out since the announcement in September on the AUKUS agreement. Many groups and organisations from across this country and from overseas as well, which has been really amazing to see, have many groups have written statements and disseminated their ideas um, and, and strong statements of opposition. And it's a really effective way to share a diversity of perspectives and also grow our collective knowledge. Uh, so I'll just pull out half a dozen lines from the recent statement of the Australian Nuclear Free Alliance. And I believe the link for the whole statement will be dropped into the, the chat. 
since, so I'm reading now from the statement, since 1997, the Australian Nuclear Free Alliance has brought together Aboriginal people and civil society groups concerned about existing or proposed nuclear developments in Australia, particularly on Aboriginal homelands. ANFA opposes the plan for nuclear powered submarines. The federal government wants to use highly enriched uranium fuel in submarines, material which can be used directly in weapons. And for members are living with the legacy of nuclear weapons testing on their country. And for will continue to push the Australian government to sign and ratify the UN treaty, uh, that's the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, and to ensure justice, recognition and repair for country and communities that continue to be impacted by nuclear weapons tests and trials in Australia. A nuclear submarine program would leave a legacy of many tonnes of low, intermediate and high level nuclear waste. The Australian government has been silent about disposal of nuclear waste generated by a nuclear submarine program. Waste from a nuclear submarine program would likely be dumped on Aboriginal land, as is the case with the federal government's current plan to dump Australia's nuclear waste at Kimba in South Australia, despite the unanimous opposition of Fangala traditional owners. A nuclear waste dump would be a permanent imposition on country, people, laws, environment and culture. From elders in the communities to young people now speaking out, generations after generations have said no to nuclear waste dumps. So that's all I'll read from that statement and you can read the rest uh, on from the link in the chat. And after listening to, to that, um, we'll now hear a little bit of context behind the proposals that we're discussing today. And Stephen Daly will give us an overview to the idea for a national day or weekend of, of action. Stephen is a member of the IPAN coordinating committee. So I'll hand over to you. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Um, the meeting is consultative, but we felt the need for a focus of unity. Um, and so we originally proposed a day of action, um, but we've now made that a weekend of action because of the possibility of Friday night rallies in Melbourne and Brisbane, which have been canvassed, although they haven't been decided on. So the weekend of action is proposed for the 10th to the 12th of December, the uh, Friday night to, to Sunday. Um, some places are still not able to rally, or in large scale anyway, so the joint activity is the key, um, whatever you do on the day. Um, and the proposed unifying theme is no AUKUS, no subs, no war. Um, now that of course doesn't preclude groups from focusing on their own themes, but we'd like you to discuss those things and to decide on those at least in the um, breakout rooms. Um, they'll be the first item of business. Um, also for consideration, but not uh, decision, is the possibility of a second day uh, or weekend of action in February on the anniversary of the major rallies against the Iraq war. Um, the 24th is the actual day, but that's a Thursday. So we're proposing the uh, Friday the 25th to the Sunday the 27th. Um, it seems the most appropriate day, given that that's when the, the largest numbers of Australians came out on one day to oppose yet another American uh, war, which we were, um, well, I can't say dragged into it because our government was quite happy to join it, but um, that's that was a, a major day worth commemorating as well as looking forward from. Um, we felt this weekend, first weekend of action is both a symbol of unity and, and also diversity and a warning to the government that they won't get away with imposing war preparations uh, and the nuclearization of Australia on us all without bringing together the greatest opposition they have seen since the Vietnam War. And we hope that that is something we can make real in uh, successive actions because we all know this is not going to be a short-term campaign um, and we also know that although we can coordinate at the national level the uh, organizing activity will probably be done by uh, coalitions whether formalized or not in the different states and territories as far as i know um, there is now a coalition of some sort in every mainland state and uh, not yet in Tasmania, not yet in ACT and um, Northern Territory, but everywhere else. I stand to be corrected on that if, if uh, there are more, but uh, that's a good start given how, how relatively short it is, a 
a time since the um, the announcement was made by our um, feckless prime minister. Um, so that's the idea. We do that in the early stages of the um, uh, breakout rooms um, and at least decide on the day of the weekend of action and the theme of that weekend of action. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you. All right, thank you, Stephen. Uh, so now we're coming up to the exciting part, which is going into breakout rooms. And there's a little bit to explain, so stick with me. It's basically we're doing a big decentralised brainstorm so that we can all have input into what we want this coalition or movement to be. Uh, we're not, you know, as Stephen said, we're not trying to make a whole heap of decisions, but to make a start on the thinking um, and the main things that we practically want to come away with is agreement or support for the, the dates um, and, if possible, a theme for, for that day or weekend of action. Um, so we will all be randomly split off into groups of about five, uh, including you, and you have half an hour in your breakout rooms. And there are three main things for you to consider in the, in the breakout rooms, so three main questions, and they will be split into three different slides. Um, so with the slides, you will all have a link to this shared set of Google Slides. Um, and everyone will be looking at the same set of slides. Um, and there are slides um, around three main themes. So um, National Day of Action, ideas, dates and plans, and you know what you think should happen for the National Day or Weekend of, of, of Action. Um, there'll be slides for finding a name for this coalition or group or movement. Uh, and there'll be slides for establishing some common goals and objectives. Um, now, there's already a lot in there from the surveys that were sent around before this meeting. So you'll see, you might see that some of your work is already there. Um, and so what we'll do in our groups of about five is you will hopefully have one person in the group who will do the, the clicking and the writing. It'll just probably be easier if... Um, if you're all talking and then one person does the, the writing for you, um, what that person will do is, as you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, is an endless stack of sticky notes. So you click on a sticky note and you drag it into the slide and then you start typing. Um, you can change the size of the sticky note. You can move it around. Um, don't put it over other people's sticky notes because it might get messy. But we will also have the tech people zipping around and making sure that it's you know stays fairly neat and isn't all overlapping. And then if you're in your group and you're talking about you're looking reading the ideas that other groups are putting down, um, you can actually also lend your support or dissent uh, to what they're suggesting. So if you think, oh no, we definitely shouldn't do a protest in Ballarat, then you will go and grab a cross and put that on there. Um, but if you think, yeah, I'm in Ballarat, I want to do a protest there, or the people in Ballarat, if they've got capacity to do a protest, absolutely, then put a star on it to indicate your support for that. Um, so again, you just hover over there, you click it, and then you drag it across. Um, and that will help us uh, see if there's you know, a strong level of support or dissent uh, to, to an idea. So you'll, we'll all be looking at the sl same slide, so it will be There'll be a lot going on, but that's okay. Um, that's why we think it's good if there's just really one uh, one person doing the typing and moving um, for each for each group. It could be that you have dissenting, you know, different ideas in each group. The person doing the writing, it's their responsibility to um, not just write what they think, but to write down ideas from the group, even if they don't agree with them. Um, it's the idea is we're just getting things down. This isn't sort of complete. Uh, complete proposals or big decisions that we'll be making. It's This is a big collective brainstorm. And if we were in a room, we'd probably have a bunch of whiteboards and pieces of big paper. So to, to go over those um, three main areas of query, so the National Day of Action, dates and plans, a name um, for the coalition or movement and establishing common goals and objectives, to think about all these things and do the writing and reading and starring and crossing, we've got 30 minutes. And it will be up to you to, in your group, to decide how to, how to use that time and to facilitate yourselves um, to move through all those slides. 
uh, and consider all of those options. So you might, you know, have no ideas for what the coalition should be called and you don't have to spend time on that if you don't want to. So uh, if you need help, there will be tech people on hand. So apparently you just need to write in the chat to say, um, please, you know, tech, tech help over here and they will come and, and give you some advice. Um, and you could also return back to the main Zoom room um, to, to get help. Uh, so afterwards, as Ka said, we hope to have some, some time for a few groups to report back. Um, and to help your thinking, there will be some guiding questions being put in the chat to, to aid your conversations. So things like for the National Day of Action, what dates would work? What plans do you have? What's a slogan or an idea that we can rally around? Um, for the goals and objectives, you know, there'll be, there'll be suggestions, guiding questions um, to, to help your thinking there. So I'm hoping that that is fairly clear and there will be the, there will be the, um, the link for this Google set of slides uh, put in the chat. And so starting from pretty much 2.30 or that's my time, but starting from, you know, in a minute for the next half an hour, um, that's how long you'll have um, to, to do this activity in your rooms. So I think it'll be over to the tech people to now send us all away into our rooms. It'll happen magically. Am I right? It'll happen soon. Magic. <laughs> thank, thank you, Jim. Phil, are you instigating the breakout rooms? Yes, I am. I just had to do a quick calculation. One moment. Oh, yeah. And Ka will st and I will stay out of the breakout rooms and look at what you're doing and then attempt to synthesize when we all come back. Uh, so the link to the slides is in the chat, along with the guiding questions that are also on the sticky slides. So Jem, Phil's put us in a in a room. Do we just not now? I oh, said, oh, sorry. Yeah, just say not now. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Automatic. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool. So you should all have seen a little window come up inviting you to a room. Just press join and it will take you there. Hello, um, I'm not sure what I press. One moment, Norma, I'll see if I can find where you're supposed to be. Okay, thanks. Bear with me, there's uh, quite a lot to look through. <laughs> Phil, I'm looking in the breakout rooms uh, of where to assign people, but I can't see anyone that's not already assigned. No, me either. So I'm just seeing if I can see Norma, that. Norma Forrest, Phil, is in room 23. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Must room have found it right 23. at the same time. <laughs> I know. I'll move you to room 22 and hopefully it'll ask you to join again, Norma. 22 or 23. Did you get an invitation to join the room now? Oh, uh, yes, I have. Great. So I press join. Yes, please. Correct. Uh, so there was one unassigned person at the top and there's yep. one more person coming back in, Phil. Alicia, I'm letting back in now. Uh, and I'm Helen, putting... Helen Woolley. 
Yeah, I've just put um, the unassigned into one of the rooms with four. Okay, and uh, Anthony is entering as well. Sorry, there's a few people that just keep popping in. We'll put Anthony in a room once audio is connected. Yeah, I'll put him into room 13. There's only four. Great. And then this Alicia has just rocked in. Yeah. And we'll go into room 20 for her. because that's Hello, Anthony. Room. You should see a button that says join a breakout room. If you press join, it will take you to your breakout room. And Brendan. Oh, there's another person coming back in. <laughs> Okay, so the people that we have left that still need to go into rooms are Amador. Yeah, just Amador's left now. No, Amador's still, oh, no, Amador's still on my screen along with Helen and Colin from Brisbane and Lily. Oh, okay, yep. Sorry, they've been assigned rooms. We'll just try to re-get them into other rooms. So. Okay. Um, oh, you keep us, I go to click on the people to assign them and you're too fast, Phil. You're like lightning breakout room, <laughs> clicky, clicky, dude. Colin, did you not get an invite to join Colin Appelt? And Amador. And Alicia. Let's see if we can get Alicia. Alicia, Amador and Colin and Helen, you should have all got an invite to join a breakout room. And Lily. Lily, did you get an invite to join a breakout room? I think I had room number three, but uh, it went away. So I okay. don't know. I'll reassign you, Lily. Mm -hmm. Just bear with me for one moment. Okay. Uh, they're in room three currently, Phil. Yep. And I'm just looking for whichever rooms, uh, room 23 has only got, uh, so I'll put you into room 23. And um, Amador and Alicia, uh, you also should have had a room, a breakout room assigned to you. Can you see a join button? Uh, Adrian Graves is coming in, Phil. Yep. Uh, so Adrian, we're just assigning breakout rooms. You'll see a little join a breakout room button come up. If you uh, press on that, you will be taken to the room to join the conversation. And Amador, do you have a breakout room assigned on your computer? Can you see a invitation? Maybe we need to reassign Amadora and Alicia keeps coming and Colin keep coming back in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there we go. Amador, you're assigned to room 19. Um, Phil, do you want to move Amador to another room? Yep. I've just put you on to room 21. If you click the OK to join Amador, you should get in. Amador, there should be a button on your Zoom screen that says join. If you click, you should join. Cameron Leckie is just coming in and I can't find what room Alicia was assigned to. Oh, Colin. Alicia is in room 20. And okay. I'm going to move, Alicia, I'm going to move you to move room 14. And Cameron will need to assign you to a room. Um, what room should I put Cameron in, Phil? Uh, bear with me again. Doing the hectic scroll, room 19. Okay, I'm moving you, Cameron, now you should get an invite. So that just leaves Colin, <laughs> Colin and Alicia. Now there's someone called May coming in. <laughs> Hurry up, so well. <laughs> uh, Alicia, I think you were reassigned to another room. Um, May. Hi, May. We're going to assign you to a room, a breakout room, May. Uh, what room number should I? Let's go room 20. There's only four in there. Great. You get an invite to the room, May. If you click join the breakout room, off you go. Uh, <laughs> Alicia, you. Colin. Oh, there goes Alicia. Colin. <laughs> Colin, Colin. What room was Colin in? Maybe we need to reassign Colin. Is it Colin Mitchell? No, Colin Appelt. 
Boo, 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 boo. Oh my gosh, Sam and Phil, you are incredible. Yeah. Oh. Okay, I can see Colin and I'm moving you, Colin. You're going to go to room five. Great. Okay, Colin, you should have a join room five coming up if you just go in there and move. And who is on James's iPad? James's iPad is in room 14 at the moment, but... But they're not. No, I'm, I'll reassign you, James, if you can hear to room 13. And so hopefully you've re really got an invite to join a room. Okay. And then I think we... Colin is still here. Oh, we got James in. <laughs> James is in a room. One to go. Oh, my God, one to go. Colin, Colin Elpelt from Brisbane. Please, please join a room. Sure. Wow. Oh, All we right. did it. Oh, my God. Except room for Colin. Room for help. Do you want to jump in there, Sam? And I'll try Colin again. How do I go to room three? Maybe Colin's not there. Colin, are you there? Doesn't sound like it, does it? I feel like this has actually happened to me with Colin in another meeting. <laughs> Um, how do I go to in, in the I... breakouts window? If you click on where there's five on join on the room, it says there's five. If you click on yeah, that, yeah. it says join. Oh, uh-huh. who's in the room? <laughs> no, oh, I, don't I don't really want to go. I don't really. I, I don't want to go in there. I don't want to go in there. They're going to ask me about you know what. Yeah, I'm not going in there. They can put it in the chat. Um, I'm. <laughs> I'll go in, it's fine. Um, somebody, there's somebody in here who has serious. <laughs> there's also going to be a whole document for feedback for this meeting. Yeah, and John, you'll also have time after the um, after this to put the ideas in. Uh, the slides will still be open is what I'm saying. But um, are, we, are we ready to... We're all back. Thanks, thanks, Phil and Sam. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you've we hope you've had um, a fabulous, uh, engaging, positive, and motivating discussions. And we look forward to sharing some of the responses because they look amazing. What looks like is that most people are agreeing with the weekend um, of the tenth and twelfth of December as the National Day of Action, which is really exciting um, to have a look at this and. Um, you know, seeing all the ideas come out of it. So I'm just going to go through um, a couple of the ideas. I guess most people can see that um, that screen and the, the sticky notes before we open it up to, to hear from other people. But it looks like, um, uh, you know, I think one of the big things is yes to peace and yes to climate action. Um, you know, most people are agreeing on that. Um, there's some ideas, you know, Sydney have already started organising an event on the 11th of December, which is fantastic. Um, WA and Queensland, yeah, with the COVID issue, um, yeah, well, well, there's no issue with um, big crowds um, because of COVID, so that's also good to, to highlight. Um, some people are suggesting a Friday evening um, in Brisbane. So there's lots and lots of ideas um, leading up to the 10th and or the weekend of the 12th, 10th and 12th but it's good that I think we could lock in that that weekend um, and so get your calendars out and put that in um, snap actions in Sydney and Melbourne so it's really fabulous to see this all come together and I'm sure there were some great discussions around this um, the themes coming out of it I mean you know no to nuclear you know no to nuclear subs um, no to war no to AUKUS um, they're all really clear ideas on these National Day of Action. I won't go too much further into these because these will be collated. All of these ideas will continue to be collated by the working group or the interim working group. Um, I might hand it over to Jem to go now to the slide. Um, I think, yeah, I'd like to hear from other people rather than myself. Um, <laughs> So I'll hand it over to Jem to share, um, you know, what the national uh, coalition name should could be. Yeah, so this was the second area of discussion and there are lots of suggestions on what we should be called. And I'll just draw out the ones that have the most 
stars around them. And it looks like there is very strong support for nuclear free and independent Australia. Um, also a fan of that one myself. Uh, so I don't, we're not going to make a decision at this meeting on what it's called. Um, that will be, I think, I think we've pretty much made the decision about 10 to 12 December will be the dates for actions around this country. You decide when in that, you know, in that period of three days. Um, so yay, celebrate. I reckon there's really strong support for those dates. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, for the name. So there's a bunch that are quite popular. This is not one we'll make a decision on right now, but this will, the interim working group is some, is the, the group and the mechanism that uh, will take this forward. And I'll be talking about that uh, a little bit later in the agenda, which uh, anyone is, is welcome to join. So to read out a few highlights, Nuclear Free and Independent Australia, Coalition for Peace and Nuclear Free Australia, Coalition for a Peaceful Pacific, End AUKUS, No Nuclear Subs, No War, Australian Anti-War Coalition, Australians for No AUKUS, No Nukes, No War, Coalition for a Non-Aligned Australia. Uh, let's see, Nuclear Free Infant in Australia again, People's Movement for Peace, Raucous Anti-AUKUS Caucus, uh, Nuclear Free for Nuclear Free and Peaceful Australian Movement, a um, vote against using the word movement because it relates to poo. Um, perhaps people for peace, no AUKUS, no nukes, no war. I think there's a lot of commonalities there. So um, yeah, I think the interim working group will, will be able to take that one forward with clearly the most popular being nuclear free and independent Australia. I'll hand back to KA for the last theme. So the other um, slide that we got uh, people to, to talk about and share ideas on is the objectives and the goals for the National Coalition. And I think um, just touching on a couple that have got, I can't quite read some of them, so bear with me, sorry. Um, a couple with, you know, a lot of stars around it. Um, Australia commits to ending the frontier wars at, um, at colonisation via treaty process with First Nations people. Um, Australia commits to regional peace and mutual prosperity, talks to keep the Pacific nuclear free um, and providing climate response, uh, including sovereignty issues and a clear climate displacement migration pathway and healthcare in the region. So, um, you know, some really great clear objectives and goals for this group to go ahead with. I'll just read one more that's got a lot of stars um, around. I mean, they all have and they're all amazing um, objectives and goals. Australia assigns defence budget from AUKUS arrangements to adjust recovery from the COVID pandemic, sorry, COVID pandemic based on public social services programs. For example, more, you know, spending on public hospitals, public education, free childcare, et cetera, rather than, you know, increasing our military expenditure. Um, have I missed, I'll just go on to the next slide just to see, yeah, there's lots, lots of ideas that again will be collated and, um, and, and more in the next meeting on these goals and objectives. So again, not a, we're not trying to make a decision on these goals and objective, but just fantastic to hear these, these, these ideas come through as we can move forward. And the suggestions in the chat will also, the chat will be saved and that will also feed into um, the discussions after this meeting. And also, if you couldn't get the sticky notes to work, then you can still uh, put what you would put in the sticky notes. Uh, you can email it into uh, ipan.orcus, I think was the email address at gmail.com. Yeah, there it is. And so now um, we do actually have enough time to ask representatives from maybe three or four groups to um, come forward and to just share just for one or two minutes on what your thinking was, just to highlight a couple of things that you talked about in your half hour. Um, if you would like to do that uh, on behalf of your little uh, breakout room, then please put your Zoom hand up so we can see it. And you do that by going to the reactions and doing raise hand. And we won't get time for not even anywhere near everybody, um, but we'll just, we'd like to hear a few of your voices. So first up, please, Michael Douglas. Yeah, thanks very much. I'm, I'm a founding member of Sydney Anti-AUKUS Coalition, and I was also a founding member of the UK Stop the War Coalition back in the 2000s. I speak in a personal capacity. There's many other members here from Sydney Anti-AUKUS Coalition. 
My two cents, I think if you named the group nationally, uh, National Anti-Orcus Coalition, it would align with Sydney Anti-Orcus Coalition. I think Orcus has to be in the, the name because that's what we're about. And just very quickly, I think um, what we learnt in UK Stop the War, which put two million people on the streets, is you benefit from a very, very clear focus on core demands. Um, so in Stop the War, we had um, no to war, no to Islamophobia and defend civil liberties. We limited it to three demands and we mobilised two million people around that. In Australia, I think here, the, 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 the demands we've spoken about in the Sydney Coalition, are uh, no to nuclear subs, um, no to war on China, and no nuclear power. We've got a couple other things we're debating around yes to peace and yes to climate action, which sound quite sensible. But I think those core demands being upfront, AUKUS is clearly directed at China. For us to come out and say no war on China, I think it sends a very, very important message. Great, thank you. And now, uh, Senator Jordan Stiljohn, please. Thanks so much. Um, so we had a great conversation about the need for a broad national coalition, acknowledging that in fact that is a, like a, that's an organisational and structural decision because you can not have one of those if you don't think they're useful. Um, we, but we talked about you know the value of uh, that to achieving goals like marriage equality, uh, for instance, where those national groups were playing such a useful role. In terms of objectives, we were really clear: no nuclear submarines, uh, no AUKUS, uh, but also uh, the, the broader goals of the peace movement too, uh, acknowledging that AUKUS is a product of the heightened militarization and, and closeness with the United States. So no foreign bases, uh, no uh, involvement of the, the kind of American military industrial complex, um, and also a, a reduction in defense spending and an allocation of that, those funds to domestic social projects and to the international uh, aid and development. Um, we also spoke about the importance of the name and what we call ourselves and how we talk about these issues as, as identifying clearly actually what we like, want to see. Um, so we were talking about, you know, an Australian, uh, not potentially a coalition because there's some uh, associations with the bad coalition, uh, but, you know, a coalition for the achievement of peace uh, and disarmament with the goals of anti orcus etc., etc. So we are proactively putting forward what we want rather than reactively just opposing things that may shift uh, because orcus could be renamed and then suddenly orcus isn't a relevant, uh, you know, naming for the issue itself. Um, the last thing that we spoke about was the value of making sure that the movement that we build um, draws on the existing energy of the uh, climate action movement uh, and the anti-racism movement in Australia, because we know uh, the peace enables climate action and that climate action uh, supports peace and that AUKUS, just like Anders at its heart, uh, has some very deep racist foundations. Uh, and uh, that is something that can connect us with the Black Lives Matter movement and other anti-racism movements. So make sure we're reaching out to our comrades in those causes um, and explaining those connections and bringing them into our broader national movement. Great. Thank you so much, Jordan. Next to Sue Wareham. Oh, hi. Thanks, Jim. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Yep, we can hear. Um, our, our group couldn't access the sticky notes, I'm afraid. Um, but um, just a few thoughts to throw, throw into the mix. Um, in relation to the Day of Action, yes, support is supportive of that. Uh, we noted that uh, the group, groups in WA are going to be fairly key and uh, Joe Valentine was um, suggested a few possibilities for, um, for actions and places of action there, especially Garden Island, and suggested something fairly noisy, making it a, a raucous, orcus um, uh, action. Um, just a, a couple of thoughts on um, the directions and goals. Um, there was... Uh, the thought expressed that a lot of people are concerned about uh, lack of uh, lack of independence and sovereignty uh, in Australia in our decision making, and a possible name to encapsulate that would be nuclear free and sovereign Australia. Um, although we noted that there could be some downsides to using the word sovereign, but there would be 
could be some upsides as well. Um, the uh, further thought was that a, a key message should be um, why on earth is Australia focusing so much on war and militarism when we've got these huge uh, overarching global threats of pandemic and climate change. Um, so that should be a key message that war is a total distraction from our threats. Um, and a further thought was to have a more positive um, outlook and name and a suggestion there was nuclear free and peaceful Australia. Uh, and I take the point that that doesn't, um, that doesn't specifically focus on AUKUS, um, but I think the notion of, I think nuclear free and peaceful Australia would be pretty indicative of, of where the, uh, of what the co coalition believes on. Um, quite, quite a bit more, but I'll, I'll leave it there. Great, thank you, Sue. Over to Adrian Graves. Thanks very much, Jim. Um, our group was very, very lively, uh, didn't have enough time. But just to sum up, the essential issues that uh, we, we agreed were uh, that the opposition is to AUKUS, number one. Number two, uh, we are in favour of uh, not, on, not only, uh, no, we're not only against nuclear submarines, but we are against the establishment of a nuclear industry in Australia and the arrival of nuclear submarines, uh, in our view, um, suggest the establishment of a domestic nuclear industry. So opposing submarines and the nuclear industry is terribly important. The other point to make is that the quest for peace implies very strongly a commitment to human rights, social justice, and to climate justice as well. And we need to incorporate those concepts into the campaign as well. However, the, the essential thing is to keep our uh, objectives very clear, very straightforward, very simple, and as far as possible, very inclusive. Because if this is to be a kind of uh, a broad-based unit, it needs buy-in from a very, very large uh, group of uh, community and other organised, and trade unions and other organisations. Great, thank you. We have three more hands up and um, we do have a couple of other things to go through before we close off at half past. Um, but I will ask the last three people to um, take around 30 seconds, if you can. Um, and so then we can move on. And anyone else who wanted to report back here, please do in the chat or by emailing that ICANN.AUKUS email address. So John Hallam, please, very quickly. You're, muted, John. John. You're on mute, John. Right. I identified three levels of um, levels of discourse, or three levels, three sorts of conversations within the um, anti AUKUS um, mob. And one is the prevention of escalation in the India Pacific region that might possibly lead to World War III. And that's kind of important. Um, because it is only the end of the world. Um, the second level of discourse was about um, magical thinking about submarines. Um, nuclear subs are somehow going to solve all our security problems. And clearly, that's complete bullshit. Um, and indeed, we might be better off with the existing Collins class or whatever. Um, and the third level of conversation was what happens to the Australian naval shipbuilding industry. So there's those three sort of critical dot points that, um, that get talked about in the media out there um, and that also we have to grapple with in some way. Yes, thank you, John. Bevan, please. We were unable to use the sticky notes, so I made notes which I'll send in. But in our group, we were concerned that the uh, that we should project a positive outlook about what we want, not just what we're against. And uh, there was agreement that we need to 
stress the investment in health and education, not in nukes and war preparations is, is important, that an image like a coalition for peace and a nuclear free Australia is a positive one, that we need to assure and uh, convince the public that Australia can defend and look after itself without an alliance which makes us a US target. Great. I think that's enough. Thank you. Elizabeth. Yeah, um, I mean, Amber got a bit stuck on the sticky notes as well, but supported the National Day of Action. And um, we only got to the third slide, so we didn't, and that was basically, we couldn't share the screen so that everybody could see the, um, the slide. So I was actually reading them, which is a very sort of much slower process. But anyway, um, the only thing I wanted to speak on was to just let people know, and I have put in the chat, that there's a new uranium mine being constructed in WA right now by Vimy Resources called Volga Rock. And you'd have to think that um, the idea that Australia will end up um, shifting to opening up the space for a nuclear industry is very real. And all, all the signs on the ground point to that happening. Great, thank you, Elizabeth. Adam, our last one. Hey everyone. Um, yeah, in our discussion, it was good to meet everyone. Um, we uh, were all very supportive of the National Day of Action. One of the things that was raised is how people, like we've got an organising group in Sydney, but how people could get in touch with each other from um, different states or cities so they can organise. I'm not sure if there's some mechanism for that here. Um, also, yeah, we had a lot of um, back and forth and discussion, but one of the things we discussed was the importance of, yeah, naming no war on China as, as um, a key aspect of what we're putting forward in that, um, as we saw with Scott Morrison at the COP26 conference being like, uh, the coalition to fight China, I mean, climate change, um, and, and having that Freudian slip, like, yeah, we need to name what this is all about, which is war on China by um, the Austra Australia and the US. Um, we also had a bit of an unresolved discussion about how to both be clear about what we're against and have some positive, um, um, you know, aspect to what we're saying too. But yeah, Tim actually took the notes for ours, so I'm not sure if I butchered the, the summary, but that was it. Right. Thanks so much. So our um, interim working group has no small task to collate and bring together all of these fantastic thoughts and ideas and contributions. There's obviously a multitude in this room. Uh, so the proposal from here is that there will be an interim working group that is established to collate the information on the name and the goals that have been pulled together at this meeting and then to return and present them to us at a, at a follow-up meeting. Um, and the, I think KA will talk about the, the date of that and how that will be decided. Um, so that interim working group will also draw up a participation agreement for members and those attending events or actions. So you can uh, volunteer to join the interim working group and there's a slide for that that was in that Google Doc with the other slides just further down. Um, and so at this stage, I think founding organisations will have um, the decision-making power over the direction um, at this stage, but please do self-nominate into that interim working group if you'd like to take that work forward. Um, now, you know, remember that it will also make sense for a lot of us to join or to form local groups or coalitions, and there already are some that are starting up, which is great, like in Adelaide, Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane and Perth. Um, so this coalition will be something that will be able to coordinate some things nationally, but a lot of the organising really will be at the local le level as part of a, a networked movement across this country. So I'll hand over now to KA to explain the next me meeting and then to take us to the finish. Thanks, Jem. Um, and thanks everyone. It was great to see some of these ideas and passion come through it in the meeting and it's a really important step to move forward. So um, for the next meeting, the interim working group, um, they'll set up a doodle poll for setting the next meeting date. and. Um, but prior to the next meeting, uh, emails with all the Zoom links and the draft agenda and any documents uh, required prior to the next meeting, they'll be sent to you. Um, the interim working group will also organise um, the conveners and facilitators for the next meeting and the current conveners of this meeting 
uh, will circulate meeting minutes um, and notes from today. So all of those ideas, all of these transcripts um, will, be, will be cleaned up and, and shared with the interim working group members. Um, so, and already the, the information gathered from the survey. Um, so we're sort of coming to the end of the meeting, um, but there's one further request that um, the organisers have asked for, and it is, that is that we ask for um, everyone that doesn't have their video on, if they could please turn their, their cameras on or their videos on, um, and pledging support for the National Day of Action in December and campaigning against AUKUS and to the no war um, cry that we're um, asking is that you raise your hands in support. Um, as people are coming on in videos, we're raising our hands in support um, and foe, I think, are taking the photos, um, which will be quite a few panels across, across the many people that are on this, on this Zoom. So we'll just wait for people to, to hey, set up their cameras. Still open hand. Um, I think it's just raising a hand whatever way you feel comfortable. And I've got you all. <laughs> Fabulous. Great. Um, just a reminder at the end of this. Oh, sorry. Is that someone? No. So we've got five more minutes. So at the end of this meeting, um, just a reminder that this Zoom will still be open and um, to complete any of the slides that you might have missed, the working groups when we urge you to complete um, there's an evaluation slide of how this meeting went so that we can improve and assist in the mobilising of this coalition. Um, what we did well, what we didn't do well, um, and what we could do better, because we can always learn as we move forward. There's also an opportunity, as I said, to revisit some of those slides that you might have missed from earlier on and um, to continue to add your voice um, to any of the slides, including the survey. Um, so if you haven't filled out that survey, it'd be really great. That's open till the end of um, this meeting and also putting your name on the working group. So that would be really wonderful if you could do that. And I'm pretty much coming up to the end of the session. So a massive thank you to all the organisers and the work and the energy that you've dedicated to this meeting. It is an extraordinary amount of work. Um, that hasn't gone unnoticed. And as Jem said earlier, we've just come in to facilitate this, but I know that there's been a lot of work to get to where we are today, and there's still a lot more work um, to do uh, for this National Day of Action. But it's really great to come away from this meeting have, knowing that we have a coalition, knowing that we have the people around this country that will put in the good fight that we need to create the world that we want to see, a peaceful world. And... Um, I think it's really great that we've locked away the weekend, um, that we've got an interim working group. We've got some great ideas for the name of the National Coalition um, with some excellent objectives and the way forward to create a better world. Uh, a massive thanks to Friends of the Earth. Uh, one of the, as uh, Shirley said earlier, one of the 18 organisations that, that initiated this meeting. Um, for their support and technical coordination and management of today's meeting. It was extraordinary to see Sam and Phil um, allocate the breakout groups. I'm always astounded at the knowledge that people have, but just to Sam and Phil, thanks for that allocation of breakout groups was just so great to see and, and thank you. But most of all, thank you to all of you for your time on a Sunday, your energy, your dedication and your ideas. It gives I know um, myself and Jem, it gives me great hope uh, for a peaceful future, knowing that you're all creating this strong movement. And it's been an absolute pleasure. I couldn't say this without it to co-facilitate with my good friend, Jem, um, from across the land. And, and we hope that we've facilitated in a way that has been inspiring and motivating um, so that you can own it and we get out there and we do this and do what we, what we intend to. So thank you. I think we've got a couple more minutes. I can't believe we've facilitated earlier than the hour and a half that we've allocated. So I'm not really sure where to go. Maybe Jim. Ka um, Ka, I could I could I just add one hopeful thing to the end before before everybody goes? Because I I think is that all right? Sure. 
Um, Because I think that hope is so important to us succeeding together. And this is one fact that makes me hopeful. Right. Um, at the moment, the last two polls conducted on AUKUS show about 40 percent of people opposing uh, and about 60 percent in support. Now, we know that we have 18 months of this scoping period that the government's running um, before the, a, a final announcement will be made on, on how the hell we would acquire nuclear submarines and then the treaty that we would need to sign with the United States and the UK to make that happen. At that point, there will be a vote in the parliament to bring that treaty into force. So that means that we have 18 months to shift about 15% of the population's view um, on August so that we arrive at that vote on the treaty with a majority of Australians in opposition uh, to AUKUS. 18 months, 15% of the population, we can do that. Uh, and together, that makes me very excited uh, that we will, through a national process, achieve that. So that's my kind of hopeful takeaway. Thanks, Senator Jordan. That's wonderful. And Jem, do you want the final, final words? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it just feels like a movement. Things are happening. You're here. It's a Sunday. We're going to do a lot together. So thanks so much. It's exciting. And let's let's go. Uh, sorry. Hey, hey, hey. I, I, I wanted I to say a few things. To, on to, what, um, to what Steele John said. Um, I think that it is absolutely vital that in the medium to near term, um, we also do a series of webinars on nuclear and other submarines and Australia's acquisition thereof. Um, and Thanks, John. We're um, just closing up the meeting. Sending us so early. Well, look, I'd like to thank everyone, the facilitators, and I think we've just go for it, Shirley. Uh, thank you on behalf of everyone, both Jen and Ka. <laughs> but can I just give a little plug? Um, on Wednesday evening um, in Victoria, we're having a meeting, a Zoom meeting, to decide the day of actions on the 10th to 12th. Anyone who's interested, can you please send your email to IPAN, uh, IPAN Orchids, um, and we will give you the Zoom link. That's all, and thank you again. Thanks, Shirley. And please remember that this will be this meeting's still open for um, filling out those slides still. So thanks everyone and stay connected and stay strong. Thank you. All the Thank best. You. Thank you. Thank you. You don't have to stay on the meeting to fill in the oh, slides. Well. You can just open up the link in the chat box and then you can leave the meeting. Um, could the facilitators and the tech people please stay on the call for five minutes? Is that possible just for a quick check-in? Thank you. Sure. Bye everyone. Bye Robin, I saw you come in late. You were there. <laughs>